Good evening. I'm Nancy Becerra, ADOT Community Relations Project Manager. Thank you for joining us to learn about the 2024 Electric Vehicle Charging Infrastructure Deployment Plan update. Participants are currently muted. Our speakers will only turn on their audio and video when speaking to preserve bandwidth. I'll describe the meeting format and how to participate in just a moment. But first, if you're having any technical issues right now, you may need to log off or hang up and redial or reconnect. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the project website. The format for today's meeting is a short presentation followed by a question and answer session. Keep in mind that after this meeting, you can continue to provide comments through July 17th or ask questions to our team via email, phone, or mail. More details will be provided throughout the meeting. This meeting will be translated in Spanish and Diné during Excuse me. The participants can select the preferred language channel through the interpretation menu option at the bottom of the screen. Esta reunión será traducida simultáneamente en español y dine. Los participantes pueden seleccionar su canal de idioma preferido a través de la opción de menú interpretation en la parte inferior de la pantalla. Please know that if the speakers present slower than normal or take frequent pauses, it is so the interpreters can have the time they need to provide the information. Before we begin, if you'd like to turn on closed captioning, select the CC Live transcript button at the bottom of the screen. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. If you wish to view the recording or know others who were not able to attend the meeting tonight, the meeting will be posted to the project website within the next few days. ADA complies with the Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Title II of the Americans with Disability Act of 1990, and other related authorities in all of its programs and activities. Any person who believes his or her Title VI or ADA rights have been violated you file a complaint by contacting the ADOP Civil Rights Office at 602-712-8946 or by email at civilrightsoffice at azdot.gov within 180 days of the alleged violation. We'll have a brief pause to allow individuals to read this information in Spanish while it is described in the Spanish channel. ADOT will make reasonable accommodations to ensure that individuals with disabilities have an equal opportunity to enjoy ADOT's programs, services, and activities. If you require an accommodation, please contact me at 623-695-7411 or ngbecerra at azdot.gov. The goals of this meeting are to share information and to hear from you. Please use the Q&A function in Zoom to submit questions during the presentation, and we will respond to those questions at the end of the presentation. Please note that the team will be using the chat feature to provide additional information to participants such as web links, but the chat will not be available for participants to ask questions or make comments. That should be done through the Q&A feature. We'll also have an opportunity for participants joining by phone to ask questions verbally at the end of the presentation. Before we begin the presentation, I'd like to introduce tonight's presenters. They are Jesse Schneider, Thor Anderson, Shaquana Shields, Nick Blanchett, and Jennifer Love, and myself. In addition to the presenters who have, we have additional ADOP and consultant staff members present to help with the Q&A. And now I'll hand the presentation off to Jesse. Thank you for the introduction, Nancy. The goal of this public meeting is to give an overview 
of the 2024 update of the EDOT EV infrastructure plan. This includes the proposed new highways identified for EV stations. We will also touch upon the status of the implementing the EV stations identified in the previous 2022 and 2023 plans. First, next. First, I'd, I'd like to provide some background information on EDOT's EV program. Next. The National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Formula Program, which we'll refer to as NEVI, is making $5 billion available to the states to fund a network of publicly accessible EV charging stations along the state's highways. Arizona is eligible for up to 76.5 million of this funding across five years. This federal funded program can only be used as directed. The construction of EV fast charging stations along eligible highways. To be eligible for NEVI funding, highways must be on the national highway station, excuse me, national highway system, and must be designated as alternative fuel corridors. Uh, next slide, please. NEVI requires that states seek funding uh, to, to develop an implementation plan for establishing a network of EV fast chargers in the state and that they update the plan every year for the duration of the five-year program. The objective of NEVI is to create a nationwide network of fast chargers along the highways to facilitate long distance travel for electric vehicles. Stations must be placed up to 50 miles apart and must be located within one mile of the highway. There can be exceptions made to these distances when local infrastructure can't support a station. Uh, each station must include at least four DC level three, 150 kilowatt fast chargers, which will allow uh, for electric vehicles to charge in approximately 30 minutes or less. Next slide. The NEVI program currently requires the Society of Automotive Engineering Combined Charging System, or CCS for short, type connectors. As you probably heard in the press, there's been a shift in the automotive industry towards the North American Charging Standard, or NACS, NACS for short, used in Tesla connectors. Based on the industry guidelines, ADOT plans to include both of these type of connectors as a part of our next advertising. Uh, next slide, please. ADOT has established six main goals for planning and implementing the statewide charging network in Arizona. The primary goal of the NEVI program state, or nationwide, excuse me, <clears throat> is to build a charging network that will reduce the range anxiety that EV drivers can experience when traveling long distances by ensuring that charging is available along most of the major highways. Uh, next slide, please. NEVI requires that states meet the goals of the Federal Justice 40 program for transportation equity. This means that 40% of the benefits of our EV network must be targeted towards disadvantaged, low income, and minority communities. Next slide, please. The EV charging stations in Arizona will be privately installed, maintained, and owned. This federal program funds approximately 80% of the costs with 20% covered by the awarded private sector contract. Therefore, no state funding is used. Next slide, please. Now that we've reviewed the NEVI program is, let's turn to our EDOT EV plan overview and give you an update for what's coming in 2024. Next slide, please. EDOT is taking a staged approach to the EV plan by starting with the state's interstate highway system in 2022 and adding new routes each year in the planned update. 
we considered feedback received from the public and other stakeholders as we created this approach. The 2022 EV plan identifies stations located on the interstate highways, shown here in dark blue. The 2023 EV plan identifies seven new routes that are listed, shown here in red. And the 2024 EV plan identifies the nine new routes that are listed here in purple. These proposed roads are the focus of the meeting tonight. In next year's 2025 update, we will be evaluating additional highways for possible inclusion in the plan, including identifying station locations shown here in this map in light blue. Next slide, please. Our 2022 plan identified the locations where ADOT will be adding new charging stations or upgrading existing stations along the interstate highways in Arizona. Although the focus tonight's meeting is the EV plan 2024 update and our staged approach to completing our charging network statewide, we'd like to update you on the contracting pro uh, process to construct identif uh, stations identified in last year's plan. We are using a contracting method called Public-Private Partnership, or P3 for short, to build, upgrade, operate, and maintain these stations since they will not be owned or located on ADOT property. Late this summer, the contracts will be awarded for stations on the interstate highways on this map. We anticipated the station construction would begin within a year of the award with some completed in 2025. Some of you attending tonight may have questions about the contracting pro process, but tonight's meeting is focused on this year's update on the EV plan. So please direct your contracting questions <clears throat> to the email p3office at azdot.gov. Next slide, please. The stations located from last year's plan are shown along the interstate highways depicted in red. There are seven new EV corridors with 15 stations identified in the, e, in the 2022-2032, excuse me, EV plan. These move Arizona closer to the goal of establishing a charging network on all eligible highways pending the availability of NEVI funds. Next slide, please. As a part of our 2024 EV plan update, we are recommending the following nine sections of state highways to be added as EV corridors and included in the federal NEVI program. There are 16 new EV charging stations in this plan. These are shown in purple in the map uh, with U.S. Highways 60, 93, 95, and 160, and state routes 68, 80, and 90. Next slide, please. The process to solicit and award contractors for new and upgraded EV charging stations identified in the 2023 plan in red and the 2024 plan in purple uh, plans will begin later this year. We anticipate issuing a request for proposals for these stations this winter. Next slide, please. I'd like to take a moment uh, to acknowledge uh, the public interest uh, we've had in our EV program and the excellent input that we've had received from many Arizonians across the state to help develop our EV plans. Next slide, please. Since June 2022, we've been hosting a series of five public meetings regarding this plan. Our meetings were attended by approximately 1,200 people, and we received more than 2,700 survey re responses to seek input on the EV corridors, station locations, and priorities for station amenities. We really appreciate all the public's interest and involvement. These opportunities are important to us as they have helped us in, uh, inform the public, refine our plans, 
based on your input and give us the chance to answer your questions. I thank you for your continued interest in the EV plan. We will continue to have opportunities for public engagement in future plan updates. Next slide, please. During the past few years, as we've developed and updated EV plans, the study team has engaged more than 400 key stakeholders to participate in the planning process. This includes federal and state agencies, local governments, tribes, regional organizations, utility providers, companies, EV industry groups, advocates, and more. By coordinating with a wide range of key stakeholders with technical, professional, and local expertise, ADOT is better able to meet the goal of creating a resilient, equitable, accessible, and reliable statewide EV network. Next slide, please. Now that we've covered what's coming in the 2024 update, let's discuss our next steps for the Navy program. Next slide. As mentioned before, we are required by federal guidelines to submit an updated plan by September 1st of each year through 2025. That plan is expected to be approved by Federal Highway Administration by September 30th of each year. Additionally, each year ADOT will continue a stage approach to completing the charging network statewide and will award the contracts to private companies to construct, operate, and maintain these EV charging stations. Thank you very much. And now I'll, I'll turn it over back to Nancy. Thank you, Jesse. As mentioned earlier, we will be posting the recording of tonight's meeting on our project website within the next few days. We encourage you to visit the website at azdot.gov forward slash EV plan for more information on the plan and to sign up for our EV mailing list to receive project updates. We want to remind everyone that we will be accepting comments on the 2024 plan update through July 17. After that, you'll still be able to reach out to us with any questions or concerns you may have. They will not be considered as part of this plan. Comments or questions on this plan can be submitted through our online comment form at azdot.gov forward slash EV comments. To view the comment form in Spanish, you can right click on the comment form page and select your browser's options for a translation. You can email us at azevplan at azdot.gov, call us at 602-792-8899, or mail your comments to us at ADOT EV Plan, 1655 West Jackson Street, MD 126F, Phoenix, Arizona, 85007. Now we'll begin the questions and answers portion of this meeting. As a reminder, Spanish and DNA interpretation is available through the interpretation menu option at the bottom of the screen. We will do our best to respond to written and verbal questions in the time available. Due to time constraints and to allow others time to comment, please be brief and limit any verbal questions. To cover as many questions as possible, we may paraphrase or group some questions with similar topics. If we do not have time to get through each individual question tonight, we encourage you to review our FAQ document on the project website or contact our team through the various methods we have shared. Our project team members, Shaquana and Nick, will assist us in moderating the Q&A session. All right, thank you very much, Nancy. Just a reminder, if you're participating in the online meeting, you can submit a written question or comment using the Q&A function below. For attendees joining us by phone, you will have an opportunity to verbally ask questions after we answer those submitted through the uh, Q&A function. 
So I think we're just going to kick it off here. It should be a pretty nice softball for the group. Uh, what is Nevi? So I'm going to turn that one over to Thor. Hello, <clears throat> I'm Thor Anderson with the Arizona Department of Transportation. And Nevi is the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program. Uh, so it's the program we've been talking about tonight that funds uh, the development of EV charging stations along National Highway System alternative fuel corridors. Excellent, thank you very much. And a follow up question to that is gonna be, what is the goal of the NEVI program? Uh, so the goal is to reduce range anxiety and resolve a chicken and egg problem. And, and that is that in rural areas, um, developers are often hesitant to develop because it's so costly to do so. And yet people uh, who are prospective EV buyers are unwilling to buy EVs if they know they can't travel long distances. So it, it kind of addresses that chicken and egg problem. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, we got getting some in from the crowd here. What is the feasibility of building charging sites on Native American lands in Arizona? So we have a couple of corridors that will be going through Native American land. We did 89 uh, from Flagstaff to Page in the 23 plan. This year's plan has 160. We also have I-10 going through the GRIC. So there is uh, a couple eligible corridors that go through uh, native land and they do have the potential for stations. Perfect, thank you very much. Next question is, why is the state of Arizona building EV charging stations to begin with? Um, so the state of Arizona and ADOT is acting as a facilitator for the federal NEVI funds. Those funds will be going to private sector developers to build stations along uh, the alternative fuel corridors. Uh, the private sector developers will uh, develop, own, operate, maintain uh, the stations. They'll get all the proceeds from the station operations. Uh, the state's merely facilitating this program. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, next question is, what is the plan to make sure all chargers considered existing are actually usable? And I've kind of a follow-up to that. What's the plan to make sure they are maintained? So existing stations, originally our view was we would count existing stations towards our NEBI program, but we're changing our tune on that um, because we have heard that some of the existing stations aren't reliable. And additionally, now that we're planning to include um, the NAX connector, that is the Tesla connector, along with the CCS connector in our future advertisements, uh, there is a reason to um, advertise. So we're uh, gonna go back and look at the existing stations that we had counted as credible in our uh, original plans. And there was 13 of those on the interstates and there was three of them on the 2023 plan. And we're going to look to develop those in future advertisements. There are no existing credible stations in the 24 plan, and we don't anticipate uh, credible stations in future plans because they will be in more rural areas. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Next question. Since most manufacturers are switching to NACS ports, what is the plan to install those NACS sports and sports instead of the CCS? So we have to install the CCS by regulation, but we can have CCS and NACS at the same charger. So you can have two ports um, at the same charger and um, we plan to advertise our future uh, advertisements to include a requirement for both of those. The industry is up to speed on those. And so they are able to now put them in the charging stations and they are able to do both. So we plan to do that. Excellent, thank you very much. Next question, are there still opportunities to submit contracts from private EV businesses? Sure, we're gonna be doing another advertisement uh, this winter. Um, our plan in that advertisement is to advertise the corridors in the 23 plan. There were seven of those. 
And then we're doing nine new corridors in the 24 plan. So we'll be combining those two uh, sets of corridors. And we anticipate that the 24 plan will be approved by the joint office. Um, so there will be plenty of opportunities. And then additionally, um, next year, we're gonna look at the remaining corridors that we have, and we'll also clean up any credible stations that we have. Additionally, there are some cases um, on the interstates where we didn't receive any proposals. We're going to evaluate each of those locations and see if we can figure out why we didn't receive proposals. And if we think that we can effectively advertise those locations again, we will try to do that. And that would be true for any future advertisements where we didn't get proposals. We'll try to re-advertise those, those locations if possible. Perfect, thank you. Next question, where, or to, excuse me, can a nonprofit be a contractor for a charging station? Um, I'm not aware of any prohibition for that. Um, they would have to follow the contracting process, but I'm not aware of that being prohibited. Great. Next question, where can we find the requirements for contract proposals? So when we do our contracts and we will do a separate contract for each of our advertisements, we will put those contract requirements on our website at um, AZ uh, EB plan. And um, you can look on there, you can see even on there our current contracting requirements. Um, so it will be advertised um, each time we do a, a new contract. Excellent. And next question, why doesn't the EV plan on the US-60 from Phoenix to Globe extend to the San Carlos Apache Agency? So US-60 from Phoenix to Globe is a national highway system route, but that route ends just um, east of Globe. And so it doesn't extend either north or on 70 to the um, East, um, and so it's not eligible to be an alternative fuel corridor, and we can't use NEVI funding unless a route is on the national highway system and, el and therefore eligible to be an alternative fuel corridor. Great, thank you. Next question, I heard it said that the 2022 EV site contracts will be awarded by the end of this summer. When do you think the stations from that 2022 EV plan will first be available for use? Uh, we feel like they'll be available in 2025. The first stations will be available. It can take 12 months or so to put the stations in. The main barrier for that is the utility hookup. Almost all of these stations require new transformers. Sometimes they require some new lines to the transformer poles. And so that uh, is dependent on the utilities and they usually have a backlog and there has been a supply chain issue with respect to transformers. That's been the big delay. Putting in the stations themselves doesn't take very long. So um, we're, we're gonna be working with the utilities to try to get those issues um, resolved as quickly as possible. And we have coordinated with them as have contractors who are applying for um, NEVI funds. All right, that is great. Thank you very much. Next question, does ADOT have a teaming portal for organizations looking to find P3 partners? We do, and I think that would be on our web page, um, which is azebplan.gov. Uh, Okay, great. Let's see, we have a little bit more of a specific question here. I see a proposed station in Bullhead City. Can you share more specific info on where that station will be located? Uh, not yet, because um, what we do is we just identify a general area or zone, and then we advertise that zone, and then contractors can um, identify site hosts that they can partner with in that zone. We could have 
several site hosts that are available and several contractors that apply. And so there could be numerous different locations that a particular station's um, located. That's great. Uh, next question, why does it take so long to implement these stations? Seems like private companies are able to move faster. Yes, private companies can move very quickly. Um, the NEVI rules do have a lot of strings attached. There's a lot of requirements that we have to meet, whether it's planning requirements, public involvement requirements, uh, very complicated um, contracting requirements. Um, so it can take quite a bit of time to do that. I think also for ADOT, we took a hard look um, at the beginning of this program as to whether there were any other programs in the country that were similar and how those programs went. And what we found was that there was W settlement funding that was used in some states. And um, as it turned out that those programs um, to develop EV charging stations didn't go very well. A lot of the stations closed uh, prematurely or they weren't very reliable. So we've really been trying to be meticulous with this plan and we want it to be successful. So we're taking the time to do the job right. And we think that's the best way to go. But we also recognize that um, there is a need out there. And so we're trying to balance that with getting things done as quickly as possible, considering um, all the things that we have to do. Excellent. Um, can you talk a little bit more about who will maintain performance and security of these charging stations? So the site um, owner will be the primary responsible party for security or maintenance um, and operations of the station. There is very specific data reporting requirements that ADOT will have access to. So we will be able to see if things are going wrong on a station and we will be able to uh, get a hold of the station owner and try to work out a solution to any problems that we perceive arise. Great, I kind of sort of follow up on that. Will the continued maintenance of these EV stations also be covered by federal funding or will that money have to come from elsewhere? Um, when we advertised our initial contracts, we did include up to five years of operations and maintenance funding, and we plan to do that in future contracts as well. Okay, a uh, question about Tucson, the second largest city in Arizona, and the Nogales and Green Valley corridor. Um, why are those seem to be left out of the initial plans? Actually, I think they're in there. Uh, I think we got, uh, they were included on the interstate corridors, I-10 and I-19 were included in our latest advertisement. So, and I believe we got submissions for those um, locations. Great, well, redirect them back that way. Next question is, uh, why only 150 kilowatt chargers when Tesla is doing the 250? and Electrify America is all the way up to 350. So 150 is what's required by the regs, um, but most of the developers nowadays are actually um, using much higher powered um, chargers. A lot of the chargers are usually like a 350 with two ports on it, and that would do um, 175 kilowatts each. We've seen some that will do 400 or 600. So I think that um, while 150 is the minimum requirement, the industry has moved beyond that. They're future proofing and they're submitting um, higher charger um, kilowattage um, to keep up with the uh, cars. Great, thank you. Uh, what efforts are made to see the long-term viability of the charging stations? To kind of get in a little bit more detail, do the contracts stipulate a certain number of years of ownership and competent management in order to receive the full subsidies? Yes, um, you have to have the stations in operation for five years. And we have asked um, in our contracting um, if there are plans for station owners to extend beyond that so we can consider 
that in our decision making. Um, but five years is the minimum requirement for the NEVI program. And next question, are stations being located at rest stops? No, they aren't. There are some prohibitions for locating stations at rest stops. And in any case, they really wouldn't be very good options. They don't have electrical power nearby, the three-phase power that we need. And so it would be extraordinarily expensive to bring electrical power to those areas. Additionally, most of the rest areas aren't monitored full time and they, while they do have services, they don't have uh, usually enough services for a 20 minute or a 30 minute break. Uh, most people are looking for the opportunity to grab a bite to eat and things like that. Um, so when you combine all those obstacles, um, we aren't going to develop any stations on rest areas. Okay, great. Next question, will there be consideration for indoor areas people can wait at while their cars are charging? Yeah, we are trying to locate our, uh, or have the chargers located at locations where people can go grab a bite to eat, grab a snack, have uh, ADA accessible restrooms, um, have other shopping opportunities. Those locations are gonna get higher priority and most of the time, um, submissions that we've seen um, are at those type of locations. Perfect, thank you. Um, see, next question, looking at the 2024 plans, but have any of the 2022 chargers been installed yet? Not yet. We are planning to uh, award conditional awards later this summer. We have to do an environmental clearance after that. And then the vendors can get going with installing the stations. Like I say, the big holdup is um, working with the utilities and, and how long their lead times are to get transformers and three-phase power to the stations. Great, now let's see, next question. Are there chosen mile marker locations for EV stations on Highway 93 between Wickenburg and I-40? We did identify locations. I don't have the milepost um, on it, but they there is uh, the locations that meet the requirements. I think there, there may be one area where there's an exception there where there was no um, infrastructure, but we did identify locations and that would be on our map um, that you can view on our website. I believe we have that up on our website. Perfect. Um, let's see, question about non-highway or freeway plans for city or neighborhood charging locations. So um, ADOT is looking right now into a charging and fueling infrastructure grant um, to potentially put some chargers at MVD stations. We did apply for that last year and didn't get it. So this is a grant you have to apply for um, and um, it, the joint office and FHWA determine whether you get it. Um, but I do believe that we're reapplying for that grant. Um, there are CFI grant opportunities for local governments. We've spoken to some local governments that have pursued those, um, and we know that they've been successful in doing that. So some local um, governments are going to be installing chargers um, in their communities. And how long can people expect to wait while their vehicle to get a charge? I know that'll be pretty dependent on what your battery level is at when you pull into the charger, but say they need to go for more of a full charge. Uh, 20 to 30 minutes is the expectation. And um, with these stronger chargers, it, it, it could be less. So it could be as little as 10 to 15 minutes. And next question, what type of infrastructure will be included in the charging station location, say like street lights or, you know, things that will provide shade, et cetera? Right. So it's going to vary with each site and each developer. Um, a lot of people are going to be putting up uh, cameras. Uh, there will be some canopies, depending on the location and whether the location can accommodate that. 
Um, there's usually going to be amenities like restrooms, food, etc. cetera. Uh, some of them even have pet relief areas. Um, so it, it's very dependent on what an individual submitter is doing. Um, and it is a, a competition. So we'll have different um, amenities to look at and be able to compare. Uh, but it's a variety of amenities, uh, including shade um, and things like that. But it's not going to be the same for every site. It just depends on what the private sector submits for a particular location. Great. Um, well, next question, do stations have to be right on the highway or can they be set back a little bit, say 500 yards off of a highway? Yeah, they have to be within one mile of the highway. So every 50 miles within one mile of the highway. Let's see, next question is, we're seeing a lot more cable theft on the rise with Europe kind of adopting a bring your own cable model um, that are plugged into the charger and the EV. Is this sort of charging capability under consideration in, in Arizona? Well, that's the first time I've heard of it. Um, it's a very interesting idea and I would, I'd love to hear more about that. It's something that we will keep our eye open for because it is a concern. Right now, our strategy is to look for locations where as much as possible we have 24 seven security cameras, if possible have 24 seven on-site staff, um, have well-lit areas that are uh, dawn to dusk lighting, um, and we definitely, if at all possible, want to have a location that operates 24-7 um, in terms of having people around, having a store nearby, and having somebody monitoring the locations. We feel that that's the optimum way to uh, inhibit theft. But it is a concern because it's very costly when those cables get stolen, and maybe the model will change in the U.S., to be like your, the European model. Okay, great. There are some rural, rural roads that will be receiving increased travel just due to significant development. Uh, how do we submit those routes for consideration? So um, in order to be eligible, we have to designate a corridor as an alternative fuel corridor. And we have to nominate the corridor, submit that to the Federal Highway Administration, and they have to approve it. Um, we will be submitting the nine corridors in this plan here before the August 2nd deadline coming up here. Uh, they'll have to approve that over the coming months, but we don't anticipate any problems. But unless the corridor has been nominated as a alternative field corridor, it's not eligible. So we're not going to be able to build out all of the rural roads in the state. Um, we are going to try to build out most of the national highway system routes um, in the state that actually go somewhere. And um, we feel that we will have sufficient funding to do that. All right, next question. Will you please talk about how ADOT is working with local governments, businesses, NGOs, communities, utilities, and, and others to ensure that uh, success through coordination is available for charging stations across the state? Sure. First of all, we've done a very extensive public outreach. We've actually met with other state agencies. We've met with utilities. We've met with tribal entities. We've met with local governments. Um, so we've been meeting with a lot of people. Um, we will continue to do that as the stations get developed because there will be permitting requirements and other things that we will help to smooth out and work through so that we can have a timely um, development of these stations. Um, so our goal has been outreach from the very beginning. We've done a lot of it. We intend to keep that up. And uh, so far we feel like it's been very successful. Great, and what kind of feedback are you looking for from community groups and the public? So we did uh, surveys. We asked a lot of questions about amenities and where the needs were for stations. Um, for utilities, we were looking for feedback on 
how how long it takes to do the process, what the best methods of coordination is. Um, so we're looking for you know all kinds of feedbacks. A lot of it is very practical on what the best way to develop the stations are. We actually did a request for information to the contracting community last year, and we learned a lot about various things that can and can't work. And we actually changed kind of our, our some of our uh, paradigms in our plan to meet the realities of the contracting process. Um, so we've been getting a lot of input like that. Great, next question. Uh, has there been any discussion about increasing the number of charging stalls at each location, kind of as EVs are becoming more adopted? Seems like having only four stalls, they can fill up fairly quickly. So we have, our advertisements have a minimum of four stalls, but you can submit for more than four stalls um, and companies are doing that. So it, it'll be up to the company and what they can accommodate, but if they want to submit for more than four stalls um, within a certain budget amount, um, they can do that and, and have. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is, does the program pay for co-location of gas stations at these charging facilities? Or is this program strictly for EVs only? It's strictly for EV only. I like that simple and concise answer. Next question, will charging station platforms capable of reducing grid power consumption be given any priority in ranking? And if so, how? Well, the, the requirement is that you have to have a minimum of 600 kilowatts um, for the station. So you have to be able to operate at least four 150 kilowatt um, locations. Uh, a couple things about the grids. First of all, overall, we're not going to be building that many stations in the state to really have an, a big impact on the grid. Secondly, um, in order to build these stations, the utilities have to buy in. If the utilities can't accommodate um, the power, then you know they're not going to be able to support the station. And, and so far, they've been able to do that. Um, I, I think for Arizona, most people are going to do most of their charging at home at night. And I think where these stations will really come into play is for long distance trips. Um, so at least for now, we expect the grid to be able to handle and accommodate um, the power needs of these stations. There are some cases where um, the demand charges or peak hour charges would be passed on and they would be identified to the consumer. So that's going to incentivize the consumer to charge during off peak hours. Um, but otherwise we don't foresee a problem at this time. Great, thank you. I'm just gonna take a quick little break here to remind our participants that have dialed in that if you're interested in asking a question, please do press star nine. That will raise your hand and I'll be able to kind of give you some control there. Uh, so thank you very much. We'll move on to the next question. Does ADOT share EV registration data to help plan for EV charger stations, locations? Uh, so we have EV registration data that we put in our plan. I do believe we collect that data. The extent that we can share it, I think we can share it at a very high level, how many registrations there are. Um, but I don't think we can share a lot of detailed information about it. Um, that would information would come from our motor vehicles division. Okay, great. Rolling right along. Next question: Has an engineering economic analysis been prepared for these stations? If so, are those studies available? I'm not aware that that they have. Each developer will. Um, submit their own plan. They have their own engineering firms that they use um, and they prepare their, their plans. All right. Next question, US 70 extends from US 60 and is a national highway system. 
uh, where 70 Cross is the San Carlos Apache Tribe Agency. Should that be in the A.EV plan? And did you follow Nick, that? One? Nick, I'm <laughs> sorry, I lost you there for um, I lost you there for about 30 seconds. Oh, no worries. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Perfect. Questions about US 70 that extends from US 60. Uh, it's part of the national highway system uh, where it crosses specifically the San Carlos Apache Tribe Agency. Should that have been included in the A.EV plan? Um, I do not believe that US 70 is a national highway system route. Great, uh, let's see. Next question, are there any plans for Highway 89 North specifically on the Navajo Nation? Yes, that will be included in our next advertisement um, to build out EV stations. And let's see, next question. I apologize if I butch the name of this county ahead of time. Are there any plans to add stations in Cochise County? Cochise County. That's I believe one, yes. that this current plan includes um, State Route 90 and State Route 80, and I believe those are in Cochise County. And next question, I like this one a lot. Are there any requirements for pull-through sites for people that are, say, hauling trailers, for example? So when we met with the industry, we talked about this. This was an extensive question that we asked. And what we learned is if we required pull through sites, a lot of people just would not apply because um, it's hard to find site hosts sometimes. And some site hosts already have their site configured and those sites cannot accommodate pull throughs. What we wanted in this plan was as much competition as possible. That was a big learning curve from our evaluation of the BW settlement funds. So we wanna make sure we're getting a lot of competition so that we have a lot of choice and can get the best deal. Um, and so while we are going to fund pull-throughs, if they can be built at a location, we didn't require them. Great, thank you very much. Next question is, will there be some bilingual signage to suggest EV charging etiquette or, or what will kind of the, the language requirements be at these EV charging stations? I believe that at the stations themselves, there will be bilingual for the chargers themselves. Um, I don't think signage leading to the stations right now, I don't think we had required that those would be bilingual. And next question, is there an ADOT plan to facilitate the installation of EV chargers outside of the NEVI program? Um, except for the CFI or the Charging and Fueling Infrastructure Grant application that I had previously mentioned, um, there's no other plans to do that. And next question, what has the pushback from auto dealers looked like thus far and how are their concerns and issues being managed? So far, we haven't heard any pushback from auto dealers. Great. And just a reminder, if you do have a question, you can use that Q&A function that you'll see there on the bottom of your screen to type that in. So thank you. Um, so our next question, will NEVI funding be available after 2025? And if not, how will these proposed stations get that federal subsidy? So the funding doesn't expire. And so we'll be able to work through the funding um, to build out the system. And if we have to advertise after 25, we will. We hope to um, really achieve the build out, but we would be able to consider whether we need to advertise again after that. Um, but we hope to achieve the build out by 25. I think the only wild card there is if we get locations where we don't get proposed uh, proposals, 
we really have to find out whether it's going to be reasonable to re-advertise in those locations or whether that's futile. And if it is futile, we may not be able to, to build out some locations. Great, thank you. Uh, let's see, do any of the proposed stations incorporate solar panels to help gather and use the power? Solar panels is something that we fund. And so people can submit solar pa uh, panels if they want. Usually they would be associated with canopies. So it would be up to the individual uh, station developer as to whether or not they wanted to incorporate solar panels as part of their station. All right, and next question, can you talk about animal safety controls required like master power shutdown, fire suppression, et cetera? And do, the, do fire departments near the station get any sort of orientation about those EV charges before or after construction? We do know that some of the um, uh, potential applicants that we have and, and in our conversations with industry, they do notify the fire departments and they do have training programs. Each company is different as to what they offer. Uh, most of them do have some fire suppression requirements, um, but it is gonna vary by the company. Excellent. And um, let's see, next question. Will there be signage along the highways to indicate that there is an EV charging station at the next exit, just like gas stations have. I do believe that there will, yes. And uh, will there be any signage? Oh, sorry, just read that one. What were the accommodations being considered for low income and minority individuals under the environmental justice? So um, one of the things we're looking at is whether or not a location is in a disadvantaged area. Um, many of our locations are in rural or disadvantaged areas and they are going to benefit those disadvantaged communities. Uh, in fact, one of, that's one of the biggest benefits of this program is it's putting stations in areas where they otherwise probably wouldn't be put for, for many, many years um, simply because they don't have that EV traffic right now. And there's a lot of benefits for that because it can bring uh, in tourism, uh, it can bring in more traffic, it can enable um, people to get to those areas, workers and other people. Um, um, ultimately, there's a lot of other benefits as well, including environmental air quality benefits. Uh, it creates jobs, it creates local jobs and supports local jobs. Um, so there's a lot of benefits for low income and disadvantaged communities with these stations. All right, next question. What will it take for ADOT to extend the EV plan to the San Carlos Apache Agency? Um, if one of the routes that go through that land uh, is designated as a national highway system route, um, then it would be eligible to be an alternative field corridor. Um, lacking that, we don't have the ability to um, place a station on a regular highway. Um, so right now, my understanding is, is that none of the routes that go through San Carlos um, are national highway system routes. Understood. Uh, let's see, next question is, how many additional sites do you plan on the next RFP? Um, it's probably going to be around 25 to 30, somewhere in that range. I didn't count it exactly, but 25 to 30. Great. Uh, let's see. Next question. Is there any interest in sites being considered as hydrogen hubs for trucking as well? So uh, NAVI does not cover hydrogen but the charging and fueling infrastructure grants do. There are trucking companies that are interested both in hydrogen as well as electrical. And uh, we have definitely met with some of those companies and, and encouraged them to work with their local communities where they wanna put their facilities 
to apply for a charging and fueling infrastructure grant for those stations. Great, thank you. Uh, let's see, the next question is kind of specific on, um, you know, is ADOT aware that some of Arizona's treasures, um, some of like the more hot spots for tourism are virtually inaccessible to EVs due to the deficit of charging infrastructure along those non-interstate routes, looking specifically at like the Four Corners area? That's right. There are some, we have been trying to do as many rural routes as possible. Uh, 160, Highway 160 is going to be, is included in the 2024 plan that does go up to Four Corners. Um, we have 64 going to the Grand Canyon. Um, we are definitely um, considering uh, tourist destinations in our consideration of prioritizing our alternative fuel corridor nominations. It's one of the top priorities. And so we have considered those things and we're building everywhere that we have the ability to do. Great, thank you. All right, a little bit of a longer question here. Uh, in regards to the red and purple routes, it was said that the bid will be accepted in winter of 2024. So does that mean that bids and contracts that will be awarded for 23 and 24 NEVI plans are at the same time or have the 2023 EV bids already been accepted? No, we have not advertised the 23 plan yet. So our plan is to advertise the corridors and the 23 plan. So those are the red ones. And then the corridors and the 24 plan, the ones we're talking about tonight at the same time this winter. So we haven't advertised either yet. So we would advertise those and go through a contracting process, um, which will go into next year. Okay, great. Uh, next question, are there any opportunities for small DBE or SBE businesses in the NEVI plan implementation? So any business can apply. A lot of small businesses are partnering with larger EV companies um, to apply for stations. Um, so there is opportunities for smaller businesses um, to get involved in this program. The best opportunity is generally going to be to partner with an experienced um, EV developing company. Okay, great. Next question. Does NEVI fund semi-truck semi -truck charging? Um, our focus and the NEVI program's focus is for passenger vehicles. Funding could be used for um, freight depots, but um, we feel that we will spend most of our funding to build out the interstates for passenger vehicles. So we don't have any plans to do um, anything with freight using NEVI funding. And next question, are there any handicap accessibility requirements like wheelchair ramp access? So we do require that the station meet the Americans with Disability Act requirements. And um, we are looking for stations that can provide um, an accessible space for at least one vehicle for um, a, to meet the ADA requirements with an ADA path. And ideally we want ADA accessible uh, facilities um, where you can use the restroom, or get into a store to, to get goods or a snack, et cetera. Okay, great. Uh, next question is who provides the land where the chargers are being located? Normally it's a site host. And so it would be uh, a store or a restaurant or a gas station. Um, and they would normally partner with an EV company um, and, and uh, lease the land to that company. Uh, sometimes you have companies that both own and operate stores that have the wherewithal 
to um, do their own EV program. Um, so it's normally going to be a site host that will own the land. All right, thank you. Next question. Uh, Arizona, no surprise, it kind of makes sense, is a very sunny state. Are there requirements to assure visibility to the screens and, and those screens, will they be durable in um, the hot sun? Uh, yes, we are looking for screens that are shaded. Um, we do want screens that are reliable. Um, we do want um, chargers that have been tested uh, in the heat. Um, so we, we are very cognizant that that's an issue. Ideally, we'd like the screen spacing away from the sun if possible, but that's not always possible. Um, if, if there is an opportunity for a canopy, that's a plus. Um, so we are aware of that and where possible, we'll accommodate it. Perfect, and looks like our next question is how are companies responding to the reliability requirements? Seems to always be an issue. Well, so far, it, I mean, the, it is a requirement that you're 97% reliable. So if you don't, if you can't meet that requirement, you shouldn't apply. And um, I think the companies that apply are saying that they can meet that requirement. Okay, great. And is there an incentive for contractors to install more than the mandated minimum number of charges, which I believe you said was four? Yeah, they can, we, we have, a, uh, usually what we do is we put a cap on that site. We feel it's been pretty generous and it does allow people to either do one of two things. They can install more chargers if they desire, or they can future-proof the site so that they have um, larger conduit, they have extra stalls available so that they could install more chargers on their own in the future. All right, and will the state be specifying guidance or limits on costs that private companies can charge drivers for using the charging stations? No, we're not gonna put limits on companies. Um, we will be monitoring prices um, but, uh, and, and if we feel like something has gotten really unreasonable, um, we would talk to the companies, but we're not putting any limits. The private sector will determine the price. There's a lot of factors that they have to consider, including, you know, whether the station's in a rural area and was more costly to build in the first place, um, whether there's util utility demand charges and how much that adds to their costs. So there's a lot of individual factors that uh, companies will have to factor in to determine um, what their price is going to be. Okay, great. Next question is, will any of the new charging stations include, uh, let me see if I get this right, CHAD demo plugs, C-H-A-D-E-M-O plugs? Uh, no. Um, we do, a, well, let's put it this way. We allow contractors to submit whatever they, they want to submit in addition to CCS. So if they want to submit CHAT-MO, Chat um, thank you. Um, they're, they're welcome to do so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, uh, that's going to be up to the company, but we're not requiring that they do that. Next advertisement, we will require NACS, but we aren't going to require chat -MO because it isn't as common. Okay, great. And can a town government be a contractor for a charging station? I'm not aware that that's prohibited. So I don't see any reason why they couldn't apply for the contract, just like anybody else. Okay, great, Thor, that was fantastic. Thank you for answering all of those questions. Um, as far as I can tell, we have answered the majority of the questions that we have tonight. So if we were unable to address your question, ooh, we might have one more that just came in, Thor, if you have a minute. Sure. Perfect. So how are EV sites checked for keeping the chargers operable? 
Well, there is data reporting requirements. So we will be getting feedback on the reliability and the uptime of each station, uh, as well as a variety of other data components. So um, we will have an idea, at least for the first five years, of whether the stations are meeting their reliability requirements or not, and we will be able to take action if they're not. Okay, great. Let's see. I just want to do one more quick reminder that if you have a question, feel free to type it in that Q&A box down there. If that's what we're working off of tonight. And if for some reason we do not or are unable to address your question, we will be addressing the unanswered one as part of our meeting summary. And again, this is the last time I'll open this up to uh, those that have joined us by phone. If you do have a question, please press star nine. That'll notify me so I can um, have you ask away. All right, we did get a couple more in. How much of the funding will be allocated by the end of 2024 out of that 76 million? I would say about 15 million or so. Perfect, thank you, Thor. Let's see, we'll give the team one more minute here to see if anyone has any additional questions. Uh, see, Thor, can you elaborate on how additional segments for the latest update were selected and kind of what metrics were considered? Sure, so um, we had a variety of metrics that we looked at, including um, daily traffic, average daily traffic. We looked at um, tourist locations. We looked at connectivity between towns and cities. We looked at um, whether or not there was disadvantaged communities located along the segment and how much was in the disadvantaged communities and how much was out. Um, uh, we factored in destinations, um, popular destinations. Um, so there was a wide variety of factors that we took under control. Um, we worked with the Clean Cities Coalition to do that um, and, and came up with a priority scheme. The good news though, is that um, we feel like we can build out all of the corridors that were originally identified in the 2022 plan. And those corridors are really cover the state. Okay, great. Next question, uh, what were to happen if these to these facilities, say in the, in the case that the EV collapses and is there money in the program to kind of take those charging stations out or will they become kind of there, be there more permanently that the public has to pay to remove? Um, so we do have bonding requirements and other requirements in the contracting process. And so if something does happen to a station, ADOT will get involved to try to um, fix the situation. And if it means that it needs to, that location needs to be re-advertised, um, you know, that's what we would probably need to do. And we do have some funding set aside in case that needs to happen. Um, we are going to have um, operating systems that are open systems so that um, these stations can be handed off to another um, vendor if needed to. Okay, great. And next question, uh, how do these uh, lit facilities that are gonna be lit 24 seven fit in with the dark skies initiatives? So we so far haven't um, built in any areas that would be dark skies. However, there may be some coming up. We, we, there is, I think, 179 going to Sedona um, I think that's dark skies. I, I'm not sure if there's anything in Flagstaff, um, but we would probably have to work with the communities in that particular case to come up with a strategy um, to manage those stations. So, 
And also we would rely on the developer to be working with those communities as well. All of the developers will have to get permits. And so if there is dark sky requirements, um, I'm sure that that would be addressed in the permitting process. Okay, great. I think we're gonna be nearing the end of our Q&A session here. We'll give everybody one more minute to get any last second questions submitted. All right. Well, again, it looks like we've answered the majority of the questions that we've got in tonight. Again, if we were unable to address your questions, we'll be addressing any unanswered questions as part of the meeting summary. Uh, again, we also encourage you to reach out through the method, methods that we mentioned earlier. We will review those one last time on the next slide. And uh, we want to thank you again for participating in today's virtual meeting. As a reminder, we'll be accepting comments through July 17th, and you can submit your comments or questions by contacting us through azdot.gov forward slash EV comments, email azevplan at azdot.gov, call us at 602-792-8899, or mail us at a.evplan. 1655 West Jackson Street, MD 126F, Phoenix, Arizona, 85007. You can also learn more and sign up for our mailing list at azdot.gov forward slash EV plan. Thank you again for your time this evening. We appreciate your feedback. This meeting was recorded and will be available on the website within the following days. Um, before you leave, if you haven't done so, we encourage you to take our one question self ID survey to assist us in our federal reporting requirements. We'll post that link again in the chat. Thank you. Have a great evening.